Howdy. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Glad you're here. Um, today, I wanted to talk about a show that I was obsessing over a while back. Uh, it's called Craig of the Creek. It shows on Cartoon Network and now HBO Max. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I It's on that. <laughs> Um, and this show has always been in the back of my mind and I never really thought about watching it because I know, I don't know, all the Cartoon Network shows just kind of have this look to them a little more recently. Like they just look, I don't know, just they, they don't look like the old, well, eh, giving away my age here, but they don't look like the old classic different styles of animated shows that Cartoon Network would have like Billy and Mandy, Camp Laszlo, th shows like that. But anyways... A little while ago, I went to a Jeff Rosenstock concert, which was so freaking cool. And while I was at that concert, I heard that Jeff Rosenstock actually does the theme song and a ton of music for Craig of the Creek. And that really piqued my interest for some reason. And so I started watching the show and y'all, y'all, <laughs> I found it to be very incredible and relatable. And I really resonated with this show on a personal level as it shows and goes through, goes through and discusses the importance and dynamics of different kinds of friendships. And also, I'm going to give you a, a spoiler warning. I will be going over and showing a lot of parts of the show. So if you don't want it spoiled, skip ahead. Uh, if you don't care or want to hear my take, then cool. But yeah, this is your warning. Also, I, I don't, I, it, this is either allergies or the beginning of a cold. Let's hope it's not the latter. I sound a little more nasally than usual and a little stuffy. So bear with me, but I'm going to talk a lot. So <laughs> you're going to have to listen to this for a while. So for starters, the show basically shows us the amazing friendship between Craig, Kelsey, and JP, our main protagonists. They go on crazy adventures at the creek and they get along super well and it's really cute. There's a whole bunch of stuff that happens, but basically further in the show, our main character Craig meets the witches of the creek, who are basically just <laughs> two goth alternative teenagers <laughs> and they pretend to read his future. However, Craig is very gullible and takes their fortune to heart as they tell him that him and his friends are going to go their separate ways. Kelsey, this can't be true. Are we really not friends in the future? And in spite of this scary news, Craig starts to notice that his friends are starting to make new friends and become independent from him. And he just kind of becomes really annoying and wants to be included in situations where he really shouldn't be. <laughs> For example. Oh, oh, watch your back, sorry. Craig, what are you doing? All right, let's go. Jumping in with chapter 17. It's a great way to start. Uh... And, you know, rightfully so, Kelsey has a talk with Craig and she explains how she how he shouldn't be getting all up in their biz, you know? And of course, she's most definitely in the right. But when we see Craig's insecurities come through and we see his perspective on how he heard things. No, Craig, you need to leave so we can finish our book in peace. Us, together, without you. <gasps> you know, he just freaks out, you know, because that's that's what it sounds like to him. And I can kind of relate to that, even though, you know, your friends are just trying to tell you like, hey, we're just trying to do this thing. Right. But it's like, you know, I, I can understand Craig's logic of like, he's not hearing that. He's just hearing, we don't want to hang out with you specifically. You know what I mean? It's it's just very, it's relatable. And, uh, you know, I can be like this most definitely. And if you guys have been watching my videos for a very long time, uh, <laughs> which if you have been, thank you. <laughs> but um, y'all know that I've always relied on my friends for a lot. I love spending time with them and I love all the adventures and great times that we have. Uh, cause I mean, they're, they're the best, but yeah, it, 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 it's crossed my mind a couple times and you know, that one day we might go our separate ways and I freak out sometimes, uh, you know, especially when my friends start hitting a lot of life accomplishments, like moving out, getting married and buying houses and all that kind of stuff. And it's a lot to take in. And the change is horrifying sometimes, especially when you see it happen so sudden. So let me show you another clip. Craig goes over to JP's house to tell him what happened with Kelsey. And like, after taking a closer look. <laughs> what? Uh, JP, who are you texting? Oh, uh, it's just Omar. Omar? I didn't, I didn't realize the group chat was popping off. Huh. Now, bruh, 
put an L in the comments if you've ever had a moment like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I personally have horrible FOMO and anytime I feel left out of something, which of course I'm not entitled to anything or any adventures that my my friends have going on in their personal life. You know, I, I, <laughs> I'm, at, I'm an adult. That's what separates me from Craig. I'm an adult and I know these things. But you know, regardless of that, no one likes to be left out. It sucks. And it sucks even more when it's from one of your friends, you know? <laughs> and Craig perfectly shows and expresses through his body language and tone how that feels. Uh, this is in the group chat. This is just me and Omar. I didn't know you guys texted one on one. And it's not a great feeling. But anyways, as my friends have given me. Yeah, our friendship is stronger than the fabric of time. Absolutely. Nothing could put a wedge in our friendship. Craig's friends in the show all come together and they reassure him that, you know, the witch's fortune isn't going to come true. Their friendships are as strong as ever and strong as they can be. And it's just a reminder that nobody can see the future and you really don't know what cards are going to be dealt to you in the future. You don't know what's going to happen. And it is a complete possibility that you can have the same friends forever. Now, much like Craig in this last shot, before the episode ends, we can see that he feels good, but he looks down at his cup knowing that even though he's optimistic, it's still in the back of his mind. It's still an insecurity That's that it's still a, possib a possibility, jeez, I can't talk, <laughs> that they may separate. And you can even see, like, on, on Cartoon Network's YouTube channel, this, hold on, let me look it up for, this video that I'm actually referencing these clips from is called Craig's Friendship Insecurity. <laughs> and it's only like, at the very beginning of the video too, which shows that, you know, again, there, there's, there's way more to come and way more to see on how Craig really handles these situations of being left out and being insecure in his friendships, even though they're, <laughs> they're going fantastic for the most part, really. And as the show goes on, Craig finds out about the heart of the forest, which in short is what he believes will give him the wish of staying with his friends forever. So he ends up going on this two season long quest trying to find all the pieces of a puzzle that will lead him to the heart of the forest so that it may grant him his wish. However, once he gets close to finding the last piece, he has this very interesting interaction with the King of the Creek where the king tells Craig that, you know, he wants to find the heart of the forest because he wants to become king again. And he asks Craig, what does he want to do with the wish if he finds the heart of the forest? And Craig says this. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you to make sure that Kelsey, JP, Omar and I will be friends forever. That way, even when we're all grown up and leave the creek, we'd never drift apart. So you're going to make it so they can't make new friends. I see. What? No. The way you say it makes it sound bad. I just make it so they wouldn't want to make new friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you destroy the chances of them having fun with other people. <laughs> I've been there, tried that. It's a tricky balance. I... Uh... <sighs> and, hey, <laughs> I'll be human. I've totally been there. There's been times where I was worried that new people would enter our group and things would change and I've always liked the group that we had going on. At a certain time, I it, it I have, maybe not wished, but I have always hoped and prayed a little bit that I would, or and will always stay, you know, friends with my friends and that we won't grow too far apart. But, you know, when the king tells Craig like it is, like, I don't know, I, I just... Like Craig, I had never thought of it that way. The way I was thinking was very selfish and it doesn't really account for the people in my life. And, you know, if I wanted things to stay the same all the time, that really does limit and destroy the chances of my friends having new experiences. It's it's such a very interesting and like very deep understanding of friendship. I really don't know. I took a long pause and I had to edit that pause because <laughs> I'm kind of speechless actually, because it's just like you get so attached to people and you almost don't want to let them go. And they themselves also become, you almost feel inseparable from people sometimes. However, it's 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 like a double edged sword because then you want you also want and care about the person, hopefully, <laughs> and want them to have new experiences. And you yourself actually want to have new experiences. And, you know, it's just such a very interesting take from this kid show. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, like, like I said earlier, you know, I admit I, I did have this mindset 
very strongly several years ago. And now, even though I didn't come to the same conclusion that Craig did IRL, I did realize as our friend group started growing, I started to make new friends and I actually had really pleasant experiences with some of those friends. And even though years have gone by and some of those, you know, for lack of a better word, new characters come in and out of our friend group, the friends I've always stuck with have always stayed and, you know, we're still really close. We're still really good friends and I see them multiple times a week most of the time. And I think that panic is something that I need to wrestle out of my head. It's definitely not as bad as it used to be a couple years ago, but anyways, because not only like if I had a wish, you know, would I be hindering others? I would also be limiting myself on how many experiences I would have. And just like with the new friends I made along the way to right now in the present, those friendships, new and old, are experiences that are very important in shaping who I am and who I want to be because I'm surrounding, purposefully surrounding myself by like the kind of people I want to be with. I don't know, kind of rambling a little bit, but that sounded right. (laughs) And so that's great and all, right? But How does this relate to the drawing? (laughs) Well, in a way, there's this character that I like in the show, and it's Omar, aka the Green Poncho. And even though what I just explained is, you know, not the main focus of his character, he's one of the Cree kids that is okay with doing things independently. Heck, he kind of even says it himself. He spent three summers guarding the overpass from the king's forces, and now... So now I'm taking some time to just be me. And one thing I really enjoyed is how even though he enjoys having friends and playing with them and stuff and spending time with them, he knows when to set boundaries and go or leave on his own terms, which is another aspect of friendship that I think is really neat to be explored, right? Because not only does he know or does he like, like he doesn't only know like when he needs like his own personal time to go do like his side quests or I guess in his mind, his main missions and stuff. (laughs) I don't know how else to word this. But um, he's also on the receiving end as well. At the end of the War of the Creek, we see him celebrating and he sees Maya next to a tree. And what does he do? He goes up and runs up to Maya, his old friend, except by the time he takes off his poncho and gets to her, she's gone away. And what I really like is how mature he is about it. I feel like if we had seen Craig or JP or Kelsey see one of them and they just kind of disappeared, they'd start, I don't know, they'd, they'd start freaking out and they'd start like go searching the woods and they would start being like, oh my God, where'd they go? Or like they try calling or something. And I just think it's interesting because, and we also know that Omar has Maya's number, but you know, he, he's just real mature about it. He doesn't start panicking. He doesn't looking, he, do, he doesn't go looking around for Maya. He doesn't try to find her. He doesn't even try to call her. He just gives her her space as, you know, she of course needs some time to herself so she can figure out who she wants to be. And he knows to give that to her. It's very genius. It's it's such a good like, it's, it's, it's funny because like, and I hate to say, and I don't want to water this show down and keep saying, or like talk down on it and say that it's a kid's show, but it is a kid's show, but it's just so interesting how you can find these very powerful moments of just like these very subtle things and i don't even know maybe maybe i could be looking like too deep into this right but i I just find it so fat like yeah just the way he handled it just that small pause looks down because of course he's sad he wants to see his friend but him just having that knowledge of knowing when to give people their space and when he needs his own space and i don't know it's just really cool it's just really cool to see (laughs) and you know i personally can't give very specific life examples because it's not my place to talk about things like that about my homies. But it is something that I've experienced. I've been on the giving and receiving ends on these interactions, just like Omar. And I think it's just portrayed so well in a show about <laughs> kids playing in a creek. And um, yeah, it, it's it's just another way of like, it's it's very weird because I feel like we always think that our role models have to be like older and wiser than us, but not really. You can kind of learn from just about anyone or anything that really makes you pivot in your thinking, I think. (laughs) And of course, also, Omar is just really cool. (laughs) And his character is given a lot of mystery and intrigue, which is why I'm like a big fan of drawing him. And uh, 
And yeah, so just just more about the drawing. I, I just want to point out that the reference that I'm using is from this episode title card called Into the Overpass. I really like the pose and I wanted to reimagine this scene taking place at the creek, like as he's having a battle with Maya or something. And yeah, I drew it on my iPad in Procreate. And yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and just just to wrap things up real quick, I, I'm I'm really glad I went to go uh, see Jeff Rosenstock. And I, I'm, I'm super glad I really got to learn uh, just more about the show in general, because it, it, it's it's a fantastic show. Honestly, it's is it like the best show in the entire world? No, like I'm not I'm not going to, you know, say any bold claim like that. But it is it is a darn good show. I, I think it's a really good watch. The writing's cool. Um, There there are some, you know, there there are some plot holes and stuff. And there are some, you know, definitely some story issues near the the end of the season. But it's it's not that bad. It, it's really not. It, it's very entertaining. It's a really good, wholesome show. I, I I have nothing but good things to say about it. It's it's really cool. Um, also, I love Mortimer. That's that that bird is fantastic. And it's also because I had a budgie that <laughs> looks exactly like him. And ah, yeah, just good times. <laughs> Just just good memories of my little bird. And it's fun to see a little animated one. So but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed me rambling on about this little gold mine of a show. And uh, yeah, like subscribe and I'll see you later, homies. Have a good one.